So I've been asked why I video blog. I decided to respond in a video blog. I've got a little treat and it's the very, 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 very first time I ever had a camera um, on me. I tried to sing in the morning and I heard the beep and the beep means it's recording. I know the beep means it's recording. Nah. Stop getting out of the shot. You don't know how pretty you look. Shut up! I'm not fucking with you. This is Vinny Douglas, potential host of the BBC. Um, some show with kids, I think. Don't, don't get it wrong, she's smart. She might look retired right now, but she's very yeah, <laughs> smart. <laughs> she could most definitely host the show. Vinny, come on, show them something. Come on, show them a little something. Here. I don't even know how you managed to talk in front of this thing, because it's very intimidating just actually looking at it. It's not intimidating. Imagine that like the eye is the eye of another person. You know, it's not the eye of another person. It's the eye of the camera. It's the that eye of a naked person. All your flaws. It's in a... Posterity. What flaws? Show. Eh? What flaws? What right. flaws? We are humans, we are beings, we are not perfect. And our, yeah, but it's recording. Our imperfections make us who we are, they make us different from everyone else. We embrace them. The camera does not embrace your flaws, okay? It highlights and mocks your flaws. Really? Yes. You really feel strongly about this because you obviously have issues with your flaws. I thought that I reached a certain level of honesty through my writing. But, Jesus. Doing the same thing in front of a camera is way more intense. It is intense. You need to, you have to really bring it. The first time they ever put me in front of a camera was, was just, was just, was just so bad. Fortunately, it was my best friend, Boomi, who did it. She's in the video as well. You can, well, you don't see her, but you hear her in the background. And, um, I didn't know until that moment that I, I, I would have such a difficult time being in front of a camera. Yeah, so that's why I video blogging. It's because I want to be on TV and I'm scared shitless of cameras. So I have to get over it. I have to get used to it. I have to be able to be honest in front of a camera. And I have to not be embarrassed or scared to put it out there for people to view. Whether they're friends or family or they're strangers on YouTube who are very, very interesting characters, you know, they don't hold back, no, they tell you what they think. Some of them are e-ballers, you know, some of them grow big, great, massive balls, electronic balls, but, um, and so they, they, they sometimes kind of sprout overexcited crap, which I just hit block at. Um, so I can also just get used to the bullshit feedback that you get because, you know, people are going to be like, uh, <laughs> you know, but the truth of the matter is not everyone is always going to love everything that you do shit. And you're looking at magazines and TV, wishing you had some famous woman's life, knowing it would never be worth it for you to pay the price and all the principles that you cherish or all the values that she sacrificed. You're looking at magazines and TV, wishing you had some famous woman's life, knowing it would never be worth it for you to pay the price and all the principles that you cherish or all the values that she sacrificed. All the principles that you cherish all the values that she sacrificed. I've heard that poem so many times. But I don't think I ever really understood that line. I do now. I read the commencement address given at Stanford by um, Steve Jobs. I love Steve Jobs, by the way, because I'm an Africa. He told three stories, and the third story was about death. And he said that no one wants to die. You know, even people who want to go to heaven don't want to have to die to get there and I can't remember what year it was but he was um diagnosed with 
pancreatic cancer and told he had a, a few weeks left to live. And basically told to go and wrap up his business by the doctors. And it was like... I mean, I can just imagine... I think anyone can imagine what that must be like to be told you have a few weeks left to live. Eventually, he was brought in to do a biopsy. Apparently, the doctors just cried when they found out that he had this really rare form of pancreatic cancer that they could actually treat. So they treated it, he had the treatment, and he was absolutely fine. But he said one of the things that he realized from that whole brush with death was that you cannot afford to live a life that in any way falls short of your absolute highest expectations. Basically, you have to live like each day is your last. Because one day you're going to be right. And there's some weird thing about death that does that to you. There's something about death that just makes you really want to get drunk and high on life. Anyway. A video blog because I want to get high and drunk on life. I want to live just the best, funnest freaking life. And I want to make so much freaking money doing it. Like just mad money. <laughs> Having a good time. Working really hard. And I want the experiences that I've lived through to be... Um, to be available to everyone. To get whatever inspiration or joy they can get out of it. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's how I wish for God to use my life. That's why I write. That's why I write as honestly as I write. That's why I've started doing these videos. That's why... I do them as honestly as I do them. Shit. I'm just trying to get real with me and get real with you at the same time. And don't ask me why I'm crying. There's no reasonable reason for it. I just randomly get emotional sometimes. Um, thanks for watching. I know this was a really lengthy one.